And hello, everybody, and welcome to Trenton 365. Hello and welcome, everybody. And this is Trenton 365. I'm Jacques Howard. This will also be broadcast through the Trenton 365 networks, in particular, the Trenton 365 Performing Arts page. I have on the other side, and I can't wait to bring them on. I've had the fortune to see them mature from a teenager to a grown woman doing some amazing things in the performing arts scene. I have to, I have to bring to you now Soulful T. Hello, Taylor. How are you? Hi. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing well. Thank God. Yes. Now, um, I know, let, let's just get that um, elephant out of the room. So COVID has made a major impact on the lives of everyone, in particular, performing artists, um, as far as yeah. uh, getting gigs, etc. So um, how has that, how has that uh, transition, how's this transition um, worked out in your favor or not? Well, I will say that the the way this transition has worked out in my favor is that I've been in the studio. So I actually have some songs now that um, I actually can say that I'm almost like almost completed an EP. The um, what's not so good about it is that I can't do any live shows, <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only artist and things like that. And I definitely understand the circumstances as to why. But I, I know it has allowed this transition has allowed me to explore myself um, more in a more focused area in terms of writing and laying down music. So that has been very exciting. I have been, since COVID, I think I have done at least three to four songs. So um, prayerfully, when we do um, open back up and we're able to have live shows, I will be able to share all that which I've been working on. Now, when we talk about, well, when you talked about um, you're, you've been in a studio, um, just for the folks who, who don't quite understand what the, what you mean by that, what does that mean you've been in the studio? So that means I have been recording um, my own original music and I have been working with other artists on their music. So like I would be featured on their song or I would write, um, help write um, the, their music. So um, you know, just been doing a little bit of both, some of my own music and working with other artists on their music and recording it, um, whether, you know, to be uploaded on like, you know, Spotify or iTunes where it can be downloaded. I mean, my music per se, I don't really do music for gain. I just do it because it's therapeutic to me and I love it. So I haven't really uploaded it for download. But once I get a chance to share it live, I think, you know, if people are interested, I can definitely create an avenue to where they can, you know, listen to the music for free. Okay, well that's that's cool. Um, but hey, you got to do what you got to do um, as a as a business person as well. Yeah, and sure. um, and, and and let's ch let's just touch on the business of it because um, you know this isn't something that you've just jumped into. Like you've been a performing artist, you know, all your life for as long as I've known you. Yeah. Um. So, and business wise, I make a lot of proceeds doing um live shows so that's why i know that that's where you know i kind of got hurt a little bit when covid and um when covid happened so um since i've been working in the studio i was able to kind of get on the more of a business side of things where um i applied for this um i think it's like this bmi site where i can get credit for the music that i've done working with the other artists so, you know, in that regard, I'm learning more about that. So when I get ready to put, do put my own music out there, I kind of know how to do it in a way that it won't hurt me. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> well, that's good. So let's, let's talk about, uh, we're going to jump backwards a little bit and talk about your early years. Like, let's say pre-college and college time mm -hmm. in performing art and um, how you progressed to where you are now, where, you know, you're, a, you know, you're a professional musician. Yes. Um, well, from early college days, I, um, I didn't really have the um, access to, to musicians like I do now. And, you know, since then, of course, networking and I've made more connections. So getting um, gigs and things like that have come a lot easier 
now that people have had, had the opportunity to see my growth and kind of have come to see, you know, my shows and things like that. The last show, you know, I did was at Relis, which is, you know, I, I view as pretty mature. You know, you have to be a mature artist to kind of perform in a venue like that. Um, whereas before, um, in my earlier years, I was doing more so things at, like, you know, on the college campus and, you know, just more charity and community shows where I, I would not get compensated always for those shows, you know, where now I am just about every show I do, I do receive some sort of compensation. So I think that's really a big step, you know, and then just, I actually have a band I can call my own. So I think, you know. No, 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 that we're going to get into talking about like the band and everything, because I know this has been um, in the making for a while and, yes. and you, you just seem so excited, even just mentioning I have a band now. Um, but I, I want you to, to, um, want you to, to, to touch a bit more on um, the business aspect of it, because I think having a team of people around you who can help encourage you and support you is very important in most industries, but in particular in the music industry. Um, and it's often difficult when you're starting out, like who you trust and who you don't. Can you talk about what, what has been successful um, for you? Ooh, well, I will say that I can definitely relate with being in the music industry and just not entirely being sure who has your real best interest in heart and who's just trying to like see what they can get out of you for like little to nothing you know because artists you know realistically artists you know we're we're creatives you know and you know if somebody's like making apparel or things like that like of course you don't expect to go to them and try to get that for free you know an artist cannot eat off of hugs and thank yous you mm. know Although it was although a lot of artists I come across, they um they just enjoy doing what they what they do and doing what they love. Um, but I think that you know what has worked for me is um, definitely staying prayerful. You know, um, trying to just be open to where God leads me, and I get a lot of advice from my mom and close friends in terms of how to maneuver in this industry because it can be very difficult, you know, where someone may be trying to swindle you, you know, um, and, I, and I can't, you know, I haven't made the right decisions all the time, but I think I stay true to the core of why I do what I do. And that is what has mainly helped me throughout this entire process. You know, like I just love this thing and I love to share and I love just creating um, invigorating um, experiences for people, you know what I mean? Like just sharing myself with people and um, just having a genuineness about it. And I think that that people appreciate that. So people, you know, at the end of the day will try to look out for me, you know, whether they be, you know, friend or, you know, family, you know, um, I have a good circle of people who um, may not know how to sing, but they know certain ways um, in business wise to say, Hey, I think this would be the best move for you. And then they would, you know, share that with me and, you know, kind of help, you know, push me through. I hope that answered your question. No, it, it did. Um, and I think that it's important for, for, for people to tell a bit more of the backstory with, with some of these things. And, um, and, and I say these things because this trans translates not only to performing arts, but just, just life in general. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of um, knowledge and wisdom that people have inside of themselves. And a lot of that knowledge and wisdom can be really beneficial to a lot of people that they're connected to. But yeah. I think oftentimes the relation between, hey, how do, we, how do we connect? How do we make it work for both parties is where I think that there's some misconnect. And you know, I like to encourage folks when you find that, man, that's, that's like a real nugget. That's something very, very special. And yeah, sure. to be able to pass that on to someone else is exactly how I think that we get better and uh, we continue to grow. Um, I want you to transition, Taylor. Um, and, and also I known add, as, uh, I'm so sorry. That? I wanted to add okay. that um, with the with the industry being, you know, like the theater and things like that, just in all general, being kind of small. I try my best not to burn bridges too. I think that's a big thing because your reputation and who you surround yourself with and things like that also plays a part in your image. You know, and I think a lot of the people that do come out to see my shows know me um, 
on some sort of a personal level, whether we fellowship that church or whether we've sang on a choir together or something like that. And it kind of adds to their experience um, and their overall experience of my artistry and just me in general. So that has been very helpful too, just with the people I've networked with and, you know, um, them knowing me on a personal level, um, you know, and just building and watering those relationships. So I think having personable relationships too in the industry definitely does help um, you know, business aspects of things because they, you know, when a person knows who you are, they're kind of more prone to being lean or, you know, whatever, you know, with you. So I just wanted to add that point. Mm. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, and I also want you to talk about your faith too. Um, you know, because, you know, that's also one of the ways that, that we connected, you know, early on, we were, you know, uh, we met at, um, Trenton Children's Chorus, where you were there, um, but that, that was located in a church. And at that time, you know, I mean, we had conversations, et cetera, about how important faith was. And you subsequently have performed at Regis Entertainment events, um, yeah. Regis Jazz events, et cetera. Just, just touch on your faith a little bit. Oh, man, I could talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> we so don't have all day, but just a little bit. I, I got you. <laughs> when it comes to my faith, um, my faith is strong. You know, I think that when we do something for a long periods of time, we just go through seasons of it, you know, whereas, you know, we just, we either can come to a moment of complacency or we're growing or just, um, you know, kind of suspended and trying to suspend it and trying to figure things out. But I can say that I've always put my trust in the Lord um, because, you know, God is sovereign and he is who he is. And I just, you know, I've always been like, you know, if the Lord opens this door and it's for me, I'll walk through. And if it's not, I will see that wholeheartedly, you know, um, and just, I love sharing my faith with people too. So even in my faith, um, kind of, um, what I've decided to do, um, that kind of corresponds with my music too, in some way is I've become a life coach, you know, a Christian life coach. And I just think that that also helps build, um, just another level of rapport with other people. And I can talk about my experiences um, in music and, you know, maybe just share some ideas from people that I um, connect with in life coaching. Um, I've also kind of like, in just, you know, wanting to grow my faith I sometimes like to do some, uh, I don't want, I don't want to say drastic, but make some drastic moves. Like I like, I want to grow in God. I want to get closer to God. So how do I do that? Cause sometimes I feel like because I'm in Trenton, I have everything within my reach because I'm, I've lived here, you know, I'm so used to everything. So I said, you know what, Lord, I desire to get closer to you. How about I buy a one-way ticket to Europe and just go out there by myself as like a nomad. <laughs> And just, you know, experience all there is to experience there, which is actually legitly what I did. I've actually, I will be um, going to Europe in the later part of next year. So I'm excited. And, and that you ought to be. And, and that's putting your faith to works into action, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm actually not, you know, so I've actually been planning this out for a couple months now. Um, and because I want to expand upon my music, I said, I wanted to spend, um, a few months in Atlanta because I believe it's a big music scene. So the whole plan is to spend time in Atlanta. And then, um, my first stop, I'll be hopping off to Barcelona, to Germany, to Paris, to Italy, you know, to also expand upon just my music and just in faith, um, in general, because it is a, definitely a big leap of faith because I am going by myself. So I think that speaks volumes and my desire to want to just spiritually connect um, more with God. So hmm. that's really, that's where I am. <laughs> well, that's impressive. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that translates, um, not only in your personal relationship with God, but also uh, in your music, what comes out of you because of that. And that leads me to ask, you know, how, like now, how would you describe your sound? I mean, before you had, um, and, and I'm going to use some of my terms. I mean, you sang in the choir. You had a bit of an R&B feel before. You also had a very um, old school, like Motown soulful sound to it, which kind of plays along your name. But how would you describe your sound now? 
Oh, that's good. That's an interesting <laughs> question. Um, how would I describe my sound now? I like to say alternative, you know, but kind of like an alternative soul. Like the last um, song that I did, um, I let a few people hear it and they got a like a old school tone with a new school vibe. You know, um, and people like to, you know, say, oh, well, I don't want to compare you, but you kind of put me in the mind of an Erica Badu or a, um, India Irie. So I think that, because one thing about music is I sing what I feel. You know what I mean? I don't try to stay, um, I don't say to myself, I'm going to try to stay within this genre or that genre. I just, I sing what's on my heart. So I'm just kind of like, I try not to put myself in a box, but I think all around, my sound has a soulful feel in every song that I do. So kind of like an alternative, if I could, if I could categorize it, I would say alternative soul, if that's even a thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is because you said it is, and I'll go along with that. (laughs) Yeah, right? Alternative soul, that actually sounds kind of (laughs) cool. Girl, this is the new thing. Right. (laughs) <laughs> so so let, let's um and and i wish we were like face to face so you could kind of like feel the, in, the energy that that i'm welling up right um so i'm, I'm trying to to think about uh the last time i saw you perform mm-hmm. uh it was i believe it was at regis entertainment you were um you were a part of our rising stars segment and you sang a few different songs, and I think you did. Um, I can't remember. Was it no, something you did by Nona Hendrix? I can't remember exactly what songs. I think, if I'm remembering correctly, I think this was the one I did. Angie Stone, which I didn't miss you anymore. There you go. It was Angie Stone. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, I have grown tremendously since then. I actually forgot to tell you that I even performed in Costa Rica, Puerto Viejo, Costa Rica. Let's talk about it. Tell us what happened. Tell us about that show. (laughs) So in the earlier part of 2020, um, I took two weeks off from my job. I spent like maybe four days in Florida, which I did the livest open mic I had ever seen in my life there. Um, I can't remember the name of the club, but I was just so ready to just get out there. And I don't know if you, you know, watch or if you ever watched um, Love and Hip Hop, but I was like really on a taking risk type of, you know, um, type of mindset. And um, they were like doing, there was this like big single release party with MJ and Amada La Negra. So I actually ended up going and uh, making some connections there. But then, um, Flew to Costa Rica, had a wonderful time there. And it was like the people that planned the trip knew that I could sing. So they kind of like planned it surprisingly for me to say, oh, you're performing Wednesday, by the way. I'm like, excuse me? I didn't agree to this. So it was kind of like a surprise. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to perform, then I wouldn't want to do it big. So I got up. When we got to the club, um, I, I noticed that they had a house band. So I went up to the house band and I said, hey. I'm singing here tonight. Do you guys, would you guys happen to know this song? And um, he didn't, but he took my phone. He listened to the song and he was like, we got you. We got you. And then they, they loved the first song so much. The guy was like, wait, 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 can you sing another one? Can you sing <laughs> another one? So I ended up singing it um, like two songs that night um, in Costa Rica. And uh, a person came up to me after and was like, excuse me, are you going to be back next week? I'm like, sure. If you pay for my flight, you know, like, we're about to go back to the U.S. I can't stay. But I mean, I really wish I could have, but it was amazing. And then I put up this big post and was like, yo, Soulful T is about to go international. Like, seriously. And with this journey that I'm actually going to be embarking on in 2021, I'm like, I, I am like a risk taker. And I'm like, hey, I can use my gift to just, I don't know, maybe get some coins, you know? Because I hear when nomads travel, they kind of just like, they plan to get to a place and they finesse the rest, right? And I'm like, mm, I'm kind of a little nervous about the whole finessing part, 
But I think if I plan accordingly, you know, I, I want to plan some things. I don't want to be too detailed because I want to leave myself open to possibilities. But when I when I talk about it with people, they're just like, Taylor, you have a gift. Like you can sing in some clubs. You never know how that might turn out for you. So, you know, I'm actually going to be spending a really good chunk of next year in Europe. You know, I've already kind of planned out everything. I'll be spending like a month in Germany. And I'm like, yeah, what's what's the music scene there? But, you know, with COVID-19, we don't know how things are going to go. But I'm praying to God that things are, you know, a lot better than what they are right now. You know, and if, and if they're not, I think that just opening myself up to that experience is a big step. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. For, for sure. And um, I would love to partner with you in some capacity. We could do some maybe some fundraising or get some marketing done to kind of help you along the way. And even while you're on those travels, if you want to report back, you know, once every so and so we'll do a Zoom or something like that, just to talk about your experiences. So then we can create this wave of influence, even just with the international tech travel of us communicating and sharing that. Who knows? where that kind of stuff goes. And that's what we've got to do nowadays. We've got to throw things to the wall and run with it when it sticks. Yeah, no, for sure. And actually, you know, I haven't been on social media on purpose for like the past two months because I'm like, I'm so focused on planning and being strategic about how I maneuver this experience. Once I do leave, I'm going to be Instagramming and Facebooking my entire experience. So I want people to follow, follow, follow. If you want to know, you know, what's going on in Atlanta, follow me because I'll be posting about that. If you want to know what's going to go on when I go to Germany and Barcelona, follow me because I'm going to be posting almost every second of the day, how much, however much I possibly can. So that's definitely the plan. That's fantastic. So I just made my note. Um, you can even check out the artwork that I'm going to use. Probably, uh, you can sort of see that there. Maybe not, but it's it's, it's a three diamonds, and it says soulful tea on the road, Atlanta, Germany, Barcelona. Yeah. So yeah, so that no, sounds sure. like. And you know what? I'll even be open to sharing my latest single with you, Mr. Howard. You know, it's not official yet, but I would love for you to check it out and tell you what you think. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Now, as you progress, I mean, you let us know what you're personally going to be doing, which is going to, of course, because it's you, it's going to bring out some music from it. But um, what else do you have going on that you would like for us to know about? And I want to specifically start with your band. Okay, well, because of COVID... My band and I have not um, done any shows of, as of lately, but um, on December 5th, we will be doing a live recording for a Black History Month event for Mercer County Community College. So, you know, we do, of course, want to exercise social distancing. And we have gotten offered, um, you know, um, gigs throughout COVID, but everybody's comfort level in the band was different. So it kind of just, you know... Um, didn't work out entirely the way I expected it, however, but so with this live recording, it's going to be me, um, just my piano player and two background singers. And we're probably going to be- do about two songs for Black History Month. And um, we're just going to try to keep it, you know, very closely knit, you know, not a lot of people, you know, until, you know, things lift up and things open up back again prayerfully. And then we'll start doing live shows. And that plan is... Once things do open up, we're already set to perform at Taste of Soul in Burlington. So, you know, praying that that all works out too. Good, good. And, it, and it's good to hear then that at least uh, in some aspects, you've got a performing arts plan going forward. Of course, everything could change, um, but at least it's not like it was early 2020 when people said, look, we're just the schedule for the year is done. We're not doing anything in 2020. We're not at that point for 2020. Right. We keep our fingers crossed in all of that. Um, before we before we finish up, Taylor, I want you to touch a bit on your um, your fashion style, too, because um, you were um, one of the women that was highlighted um, when I did the fashion segment at Fashion to Figure. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you know, and you did some modeling for us, and that was a that was an awesome time. But you've always been someone who has a very clear um, style. Like, like even when you were younger, like, like you've been like quite conservative, <laughs> but respectful and fashionable. But even on the cutting edge with some things, etc. So, where are you right now with your fashion? With my fashion, hmm. 
I, you know what? More so recently, I've been doing a lot of hats, a lot of big hats. I don't know why, but I feel like these big hats are so just like queenly and not just that they, they make a big statement to me, you know, because I, I walk into a room and I have this really big hat with this really big rim and all the attention just kind of goes to my direction. You know, um, I, I want to say that I'm, I'm exploring, I'm being open because I'm actually touching on um, parts of myself where I'm just like, I've always kind of wanted to wear this. I never really done it, but I'm going to try it now. You know what I mean? And um, I've actually been kind of shifting out some of my old fashion and then kind of, you know, been buying some new things that are kind of like a lot of um, dusters, you know, like a lot of dusters that come down, down really long and things like that. I'm kind of fascinated with that in the season right now. So, you know, my fashion kind of just goes with where I am, you know, because it could be a season where I'm just like, you know, I'm a more of a jean and a t-shirt kind of girl. But this this season, I'm kind of like, you know, I want to, I, w- I want a little bit of funk here. You know what I mean? So that's, I don't know if that is your question, but that's where I am. I also wanted to mention back on the last question, I forgot that um, I, in the next coming, um, and next year we'll be working with an entertainment group. They do weddings and all kinds of like um, galas and big events. So of course, you know, we haven't had the, um, chance to get together to discuss a calendar of events of what's going to be happening but um since being in COVID I was able to meet with the leader of the entertainment group and we have connected and we're just waiting to wait and see get everything all lined up so I just want to make sure that I I I got the whole idea about um hats like you said hats because the first thing that jumped in my mind was um there's a popular uh commercial of four women like they were going to the Kentucky Derby and the one woman who's the driver gets out of the vehicle at the end and she's got a, a, an amazingly huge hat on that is just all fashion and, and that's the first thing that I thought about and I could totally see you performing uh, in that some sort of a space with something that's highlighting the fashion of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> all right yeah. so who are, who are the um the folks you you have in your band oh okay i have um Colleen. he's a bass player i have a person named johnny he's the piano player i have a drummer named jay he goes by jive he's the um he used to play for grace little actually so he's really fire and i have two beautiful young ladies by the name of Araba and Kanu, which Kanu actually has out an album. So she does like kind of house music and things like that. So she's really dope. And Araba, you know, she does a lot of features with a lot of different artists. Um, one is from South Jersey, one is from North Jersey. So um, they're really awesome. And then every now and then I'll um, link up with this other girl. She'll come in and kind of help if we need like a third part harmony too. She'll come in, her name is um, Sharissa. She also has an album out too. And um, we actually work um, in another group together also. Um, So those are the people right now that's like the core members, you know. So we're currently on the search for a guitarist. So if you know anyone, send them my way. Okay. Um, But those are the main core people that we have in our group, yeah. Gotcha. And I'm sure after this gets out, there'll be some some guitarists who will be looking for work. You know how the gig economy is is nowadays. All right. And... um, (laughs) So, um, you know, be, before we finish up, um, I'd like to know what, what can we do um, as people who are supportive of artists um, who are, you know, cutting their teeth in this uh, industry, so to speak, how can the general public, you know, really support you all? Stay on the lookout for my new music. Um, stay posted on my website and my Instagram, mainly my Instagram, because I do a lot of advertising on there. And when the, when COVID ends and oh Lord, by God, I know it's going to end when we have that next show come out, come out because it's going to be lit. It's going to be like a COVID relief. I think we're all going to be relieved and I'm going to bring nothing but fire. So that's, if you come to the show, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. That is, 
I, you know, when people come to the show, that's the best support that I can give me because you're giving me a chance to share me with you. Okay. And you don't want to miss that because I, I'm telling you, I put it out there and I've grown tremendously since you see me. So you got to come too, Jacques. <laughs> you're going to be a little bit amazed too. You're going to be like, wow, that's some big growth there. You know, I can, o- I can only imagine. And I'm so thankful to chat with you, Taylor. I'm looking forward to supporting you in the future and please stay safe during these times and keep on doing what, what you're so passionate about, which is making people happy by entertaining them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be blessed. Send my love to your family. And please, you also stay safe. And everyone that's watching, please stay safe. Wash your hands. Keep your mask on, okay? (laughs) So I can see you at that next show. (laughs) Love it. Thank you. Soulful Tea, folks. Make sure you get over to the website. I am Soulful Tea. And that's T-E-E dot com. Information will be up on the Trenton 365 pages as well. Soulful Tea, talk to you soon, my dear, and everyone else. Please be safe, justice, peace, and humility.